sometimes is to wait. So today we're going to look at the message delayed, detoured, but not denied. Jeremiah 29 verse 11 says, For I know the plans I have for you, says the Lord. Plans to prosper you and not to harm you. Plans to give you hope and a future. So sometimes when we're waiting, we might become frustrated. We might even become sad and despondent. Some of us might even just throw up our hands and decide to give up. Don't give up. Take a listen to the life of Joseph, whose plans were delayed. And hear the story of Paul, whose plans were detoured. And at the end, we see in both cases that those plans were not denied. Let's listen and see what the Spirit would say in our situation. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. Are your hearts glad this morning? Amen. Truly, God has been good to each and every one of us. Amen. 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 If you love him this morning, let's just praise him. Let's just take a few minutes to praise him. Let's just praise the Lord. Let's just praise him. Let's just praise him. Let's just praise him. Let's just praise him. Hallelujah. Let's just praise him. Let's just praise him. Let's just praise the Lord. Let's just praise him. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Let's just take the time and praise him. Hallelujah. Let's just take the time and say thank you. Thank you, Jesus. 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 Glory to God. Glory to God. Glory to God. Glory to God. Nobody's mad this morning but the devil. Nobody's mad this morning but the devil. Amen? Because he's worthy to be praised. The word tells us that he inhabits the praise of his people. And that praise is comely. That means it's pretty. That means it's nice. It means it's all right to praise the Lord. Amen? We never out of order giving God the glory. We never out of order giving God the praise. We never out of order taking time to say thank you, Jesus. Amen? Amen. Amen. I give honor to God this morning. I am so thankful to be standing here before each and every one of you. You know, whenever Pastor Zach and the Zach family is out of town, we miss them. And as we were, uh, uh, we, we talked to Pastor earlier uh, this week, and we asked him, do you miss us? And he said, well, yeah. And we, I told him, I said, well, we miss you too, amen? amen? And we're not making that up because we miss him, amen? We miss seeing Sister Zach's face out there smiling at us and the little Zach children. And so as a church family, when a family member is away, those of us that are at home, we lift them up in prayer. We lift them up with sweet thoughts, and then we do what we, they've asked us to do in the meantime. They've asked us to go on and have service. Amen? Amen? Amen. So let's just go on and have church this morning. Amen. 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 Today, I want to talk to you. I consider it a, a privilege and an honor to be asked to give the Sunday morning message because truly we know that God sends the Rima word to his people. And that Rima word is a word that's designed specifically for each and every one of us. You know, it, it, would be, it would be sad to sit in service for however many minutes I'm going to talk and not get something out of it. And so, and so, and so what we're trying to do right now is to make sure that we move every hindrance, any type of uh, disturbance, anything out of the way so that we can hear from the Lord. Amen? Amen. Amen. Our scripture for this morning is Jeremiah 29, verse 11. And we're going to ask that everyone stand. They're going to put it up on the screens because we're going to read it from the NIV version. And we're going to ask that everyone stand, and we're going to read it together. And the word says... For I know the plans I have for you, declares the Lord. Plans to prosper you and not to harm you. Plans to give you hope 
and a future. Jeremiah 29 and 11. You may be seated. Amen. The King James Version of that same scripture reads, For I know the thoughts that I think toward you, saith the Lord, thoughts of peace, not of evil, to give you an expected end. And what I'd like to talk to you this morning, my topic is delayed, detoured, but not denied. Amen? Delayed, detoured, but not denied. Let's bow our heads for a word of prayer. Heavenly Father, we come to you this morning asking, Lord, that you bless the message, Lord, that you move self out of the way, that you break forth with your anointing, Lord, and that you speak to our hearts, Lord. Anything that would hinder your word, any darkness, remove it right now. Any unpure thoughts, any motives, Lord, that would come against the work that you've assigned for this word, we're asking that you move it in the name of Jesus. Amen and amen. For I know the thoughts that I think towards you, saith the Lord. Amen? Amen? For I know the plans I have for you, declares the Lord. He says he has plans to prosper us Amen. and not to do us harm. Amen? God has a plan and has plans for each and every one of our lives. Amen. Sometimes people will look, at, um, look in the natural sense and think, all of the plans that God has for prosperity, for blessing, for hope is just reserved for the pastor Amen. or maybe for the preachers or perhaps for the choir members Amen. or maybe some of the officers or maybe some of the special Amen. ones. That's simply not true. Amen. God has plans, great plans for each and every one of us. Amen. Amen. He loves us and it is his good pleasure to see us successful, fruitful, and having and enjoying flourishing lives. Do you all believe that? Do you believe that? Somehow or another, the enemy has told and, and told a great big old lie. Amen. And he has whispered that lie into the hearts and to the minds of many of the people. Amen. He's made people believe that it's not God's will that we're healthy. It's not his will that we prosper. It's not his will that we, that we are successful. It, you know, he just wants us to struggle, and this is a suffering way, and then maybe just by and by after a while, we'd be all right, Sister Williams, okay? You know, just hang on in there. No, 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 that's not what God has for us. That's not what his plans are for us, amen? When we think about the word plans, think about the definition of the word plans. Amen? A plan, when someone has a plan, it's a method of doing something or making something that's been worked out beforehand. You see what I'm saying? When you have a plan, you're not just kind of just getting in, just, you know, stumbling upon and just coincidentally and just in case and, and you know, what, any of those kinds of things. But it's been thought out beforehand. Amen. You see, God sees the end from the beginning. Amen? Amen. 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 He's not, you know, digging and scratching and, and trying to figure out what he's going to do with you. God knows all about us. He has a plan for our lives. A plan is something carefully conceived to achieve a given effect or purpose or goal. God has a goal in mind. Amen? He said, let's go back to that verse again. I keep that verse. He said, I, have, I know the plans I have for you, plans to prosper you and not to harm you. It's not his desire to harm you. Plans to give you a hope and a future. The word tells us the Lord has planned to prosper us. Some people don't believe it. Sometimes people will look at circumstances and look on the outside of things and look at how life is going and look at how things are going and feel like, well, you know, if he did have a plan, it didn't work. You see what I'm saying? 
You know, he, he might have had a plan for me. But somehow or another, this thing has happened in my life. This thing happened over there. I got this bad news at the doctor's office. Any of these circumstances have happened, and it has changed God's plan. That would mean that we don't believe that God is sovereign. You see what I'm saying? That would mean that we don't believe that God is in charge. That would mean that we don't believe that everything that happens in our life, God allows it so that it will either work together for our good, amen, or it will take a blessing, a cursing, and turn it to a blessing. And that still means it's going to work together for our good, doesn't it? Doesn't it? Y'all read that? Did you all see that? God is sovereign. I, 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 um, I, I wrote down, you know, just, just kept in mind two stories. I took, I took the, uh, I looked in the Old Testament, and I looked at a person that God had given favor. And I thought about Joseph. Amen? You can start reading about Joseph, and you can read all of this at home at another time. At the 37th chapter of Genesis, and there's several chapters. You go on through the 38th and what have you, and you can hear all about his plight. And if you were to, to, to uh, read the story in the middle or look at it before the end, before the plan has been worked out, before the plan, the process of the plan has happened, you would think that somehow, you know, I, he, 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 his, his poor pitiful thing, his life is just pitiful. You, you see what I'm saying? But do you not know that you cannot have a powerful life at the same time that you have a pitiful life? There's, if there's pity, there's no power, and power get, does away with pity. You see what I'm saying? So we're supposed to hallelujah anyhow in everything give thanks. No, God is working it out for my good. Trust him, believe him, and know everything is going to be all right. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You look at Joseph. Joseph had a dream. Well, first of all, before, when Joseph was favored, he was born, he was favored. He was loved. You see what I'm saying? And so then he had a dream. And when he had that dream, he dreamed that his brothers and all of those were their sheaves were going to bow before him. Amen. And so he was so excited and so enthusiastic, he told his brothers his dreams, didn't he? Amen. Did you not know you can't tell everybody your dream? Amen. Because everybody's not happy for you. Everybody's not glad for you. Everybody's not going to try to help you. Everybody's not going to try to try to uh, encourage you. Hallelujah. Some folk going to be mad at you because you got a dream. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. But he told the brothers the dreams. The brothers got jealous. And since they got jealous, what did they do? They plotted to kill him, didn't they? We're going to kill you. We'll see about your dream now. Don't you know we got some church folks like that? They want to kill you spiritually dead. You see what I'm saying? They're not going to necessarily come with a knife and try to murder you or try to shoot you, but they want to kill your dream. You see what I'm saying? But what happened was they saw him and they decided, let's get together and let's, let's kill him. But see, but, but, but you see how God is? You see how God is? His oldest brother, Reuben, said, no, y'all, let's not kill him. Let's not kill him. I tell you what you do, let's just put him in a pit. And so that's what they did. They put him in a pit. Okay? When they had him in the pit, suppose Joseph at that point forgot all about his dream, forgot about the favor God had given him, and walked away and got discouraged. You see, he didn't get discouraged, right? In that pit. And then guess who? They, they were sitting around thinking that Reuben was gone, and they decided, I know what? Let's, uh, let's make some money off of him. Amen. You see how people like to make money off him? Let's make some money off of him. So Judah came up with the plan, let's sell him as a slave. Y'all can read all of this. They sold him for 20 pieces of silver. And he was, he was sold as a slave, and he went on down to Egypt. Amen. Amen? So at that point, it didn't look too good, did it? Plans to prosper you and to give you a good hope, that didn't look too good, did it? If you looked at it then, you would have thought, that, 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 you know, something happened with the plan. But don't forget that God is sovereign. He sees and he knows. He sees the end from the beginning. 
All right, he got there to Egypt, and instead of him just being anybody's slave, those folks that bought him sold him to Potiphar. He was the king's, uh, uh, um, a Potiphar was on a part of Pharaoh's inner court or inner circle. So he was there, and God gave him favor. And God gave him favor, and Potiphar decided to, to make him the, the uh, put him in charge of everything in his house. So even though he was a slave, God still blessed that household. God still gave favor. God still smiled on him. God still let him know I'm with you. Amen? Amen, amen. So while he was there, he was flourishing and going on, and then here come the devil. Okay? You can be going through stuff, and here come the devil. Because he was a good-looking man, Potiphar's wife began to lust for him. Come on, let's get together. Come on, Joseph. Nobody will know. Joseph ignored that, didn't he? He knew who he belonged to. He knew what God, the God that he served. He knew it would not have been right for him to go down there and get involved with that man's wife. So he refused to do it. And that woman sought every opportunity she could to ensnare him. When she couldn't get him to, to do it and to, and, to, and to walk away from God, then she used trickery. She waited and laid and waited until nobody was there and tried to get him, didn't she? When he refused to do it and he ran, because sometimes, you know, you've heard about uh, flee from the very appearance of evil. Sometimes you got to quickly get out of there. You can't stay. You got to go fast. Wait, wait. Hallelujah. And so he quickly got out of there and he left his robe. And because he left his robe and turned him down, what has no fury as a woman scorn? Okay, I'll fix you. So she decided to tell her husband, look what this slave did. Here's his cloak. He tried to come here and he tried to molest me. So guess what happened? That man believed his wife. Can I say his lying wife? Okay. His little deceitful wife. His lustful wife. Okay, his Jezebel of a wife. Amen. He believed his wife and threw Joseph into prison. And the prison that Joseph was thrown into wasn't just any prison. It was the king's prison. Once again, favor. You see what I'm saying? Favor. It didn't just by happenstance that he was in there. But he was in there, and then the Lord gave him favor with the jailers. And when he had favor with the jailers, they put him in charge there. You see what I'm saying? So Joseph in charge. He in jail, but he in charge. My God, my God. Read it, read it, read it. Joseph was in charge in the jail, and then after a while, because he still knew, he still knew who he belonged to. He still had confidence in God. He still knew God loved him. He still hadn't forgotten that God had a promise. God had given him a dream. God had let him know that things were going to be all right in his lifetime. Amen. Amen. We don't know how God's going to work it out, but God's going to work it out. So what happened was the, the chief butler and the baker came to prison. And remember, they were all sad and pitiful, and Joseph saw them and took note of them and asked, what's wrong? And he, he found out what was wrong. The chief baker, I mean, the chief butler had been placed into jail and had a dream the night before. And, uh, and he didn't know the interpretation of it. Read there and see that Joseph said, don't interpretations belong to the Lord? So, so he's even in trouble, because by now in jail and all of that, some of us would have given up. Now, I'm not talking about nobody in here, some of you know, but some people would have given up. You, 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 you see what I'm saying? But what, what happened was he told the uh, chief uh, uh, butler the interpretation of the dream. And he told him that he was going to be restored. He said, but I tell you what, when you're restored, remember me. Remember me. I don't belong in here. Tell Pharaoh about me and get me out of this place, okay? You know, when people are in trouble and they want some help, won't they promise you anything? Mm, I'm going to tell them. I, 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 I got your back. I got your back. I, I, I'll handle it for you. He told Joseph that he would tell Pharaoh when he got out. Well, when the, when, the chief, when the baker saw that everything went okay for, for the butler, he said, well, let me tell him my dream. His dream wasn't as nice, was it? He was going to be killed. But again, Joseph was bold enough in the face of, it, of, of whatever situation to say, well, thus saith the Lord. When the chief butler got out, the chief butler got out and was out and forgot all about Joseph. 
for two years. For two years after the promise had been made to him by man. And we ain't talking about God's promise. We're talking about how man will do because man will forget they told you something. As a matter of fact, they'll say, I didn't say that. <laughs> yes, you did. You said it. You said it. Amen. Your back was up against the wall and you said you would do it. <laughs> and now you've forgotten. But for two years, Joseph had to stay and serve, didn't he? In prison. And it wasn't until, and you know, two years is a long time. It wasn't until Pharaoh had a dream that he could not find an interpretation for that the butler remembered Joseph and told the Pharaoh, not because he was trying to help Joseph, mind you, but because he was trying to get favor with, uh, with Pharaoh. I know somebody who can, who can help you out. You, you see, influential people, haven't you met people like that? They try to move next to, but that's what he did. And when he did that, and when he told Pharaoh what his dream meant, Pharaoh rewarded Joseph. He brought Joseph out of the prison. He took off his signet ring and put it on Joseph's finger. He put a chain of gold around his neck. He dressed him in fine robes and, 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 and costly linen. He had him to ride in his chariot, and he had him decreed as the second person in charge. He gave him the priest's daughter for his wife. Hallelujah, hallelujah, and made it so that in all of Egypt, his word, the only word that was greater law than his, was Pharaoh. God says it. That settles it. God says it, that settles it. In that situation, it looks like, you notice we're going to say looks like, it looks like God's plans to prosper him was delayed. But it wasn't denied. It wasn't denied. It was not denied. God said, I will prosper you and give you good success. That's what he had. And then after that, he also said, your brothers, your kinfolk are going to be bowing to you. Isn't that what happened? Isn't that what happened? Isn't that what happened? Hallelujah. It might have been God's plan all along. See, that's why I said it looks like it was delayed. Because if Joseph had not gone through all of that, he would not have been in place to save his family during the famine. We don't know why certain things happen in our lives. We don't know why things come this way. But God sees, remember I said that, the end from the beginning. God knew a famine was coming. God knew that he needed to have his person where the riches were. Amen. Amen. He needed somebody that would obey him. He needed somebody that would listen to him. He needed somebody that would do what he said do. See, sometimes you can have a rich fool. Have you ever heard of a rich fool? Somebody doesn't know, you know, they got a lot of money, but they don't know what to do with their money. That's a rich fool, right? That's a rich fool. God is tired of rich fools. He's tired of rich fools. And so he puts his people all through, all through the ages. He puts people of discretion and wisdom in the place to do what needs to be done. Amen. Amen? Amen. Amen. I just look at that situation going back to the plan delayed. A lot of times in our lives, God can send us or someone can give us a word. And because the word was given, we want it right now. We wanted you, you know, uh, uh, Reverend Hill, God is going to bless you with an awesome ministry. And when that was said, that might have been that, that prophecy came forth and the Lord sent, said that, there's a process that has to happen. It doesn't happen overnight. Amen. Suppose he jumped up the day he heard that and didn't do any preparation and wanted what God had said was going to happen. If God said it was going to happen, the process, the way that he's going to take you, it might look like it's delayed, but it's not. It's not. It's going to whatever God wants to happen in your life will happen if we'll just trust him, if we'll just obey him, if we'll just lean not to our own understanding and all our ways acknowledge him, if we will just let him have his way in our lives. I think of another situation. I think of the situation of, in the New Testament of Paul. 
Paul was going wrong, and you know, we, we, we're not going to go over that part, but at the point when God turned him around and gave him a vision, he let him know that he was going to make him, uh, give him a work, and make him a minister to the Gentiles. Amen? Amen. And he was going to be able to preach and convert the Gentiles and have them to come and to accept Christ. And if we would look at that, we would say, well, yeah, that's, that's tremendous, but look at what happened in Paul's life. Look at all of the things that happened that tried to stop it. Look at all of the things that came along that tried to delay it. Look at all of the things that came along and tried to detour it. Amen. Let's go to Acts, the 27th chapter. And the 28th, uh, 27th chapter, all of that, and the 28th verse as well. Paul, and, and, and the, 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 the um, um, precursor to that was that he had been preaching and, and miraculous things had happened, and he had already uh, done a work in terms of uh, getting churches started, and those things had happened. But then the, the, the uh, people became jealous again. Amen. You see how jealousy will do? They became jealous again. And once they became jealous, what they did was they sought to kill him. Amen. That's a common theme, isn't it? They sought to kill him. And when they sought to kill him, they went before the, the, uh, the court process and, and, you know, just similar to what, uh, what Jesus went through when, when they sought to kill him. And when they couldn't find anything wrong with him, they couldn't find anything that he had done that was worthy of death, the people still insisted that Paul be killed. Amen. And so Paul said, okay, well, fine. I'm a Roman citizen. I want to appeal to Caesar. Yeah. He had to do that to save his life. So to appeal to Caesar, he had to, take, he had to set sail and ride by ship to Rome. Amen. They still had him as a prisoner. They still, it was not a pleasant thing that he was going through. And as, he was go, as, he, as they were setting sail, Paul said, you know, I don't think we should go on this journey. They wouldn't listen to him, would they? So he still had to go in that boat, and they had to set sail for Rome. Amen. Fourteen days they were at sea, tossed about, not knowing how things were going to work out. Things were so bad that the people were not eating. They were fasting and praying. The sailors tried to escape in little boats because they, the, the sea was so bad. Amen. They say that the, the sun wasn't shining. You know, they couldn't see the moon. It was just that dark out at sea. And Paul had to, had to tell them, unless everybody remains in the boat, in the ship, they can't be saved. Paul had to encourage the people to eat. Amen. Paul had to be placed again, he had favor, placed again in a role of leadership. Yes. Amen? Amen? Rather than being upset, rather than being angry, rather than being mad, rather than charging God foolishly, why am I in this situation? Paul had to encourage the people to go on. Eat, be encouraged, stay in the ship, and we're going to make it okay. Amen. And then as they were going, there was land off. There was an island, and that's where the boat began to drift, and the boat was broken apart. And they had to swim the, some swam the uh, shore, some floated to shore, and they got to the island, and they got safely there. 276 men. Amen? Amen. When they got there, they decided to make a fire. And when they were uh, gathering sticks to make the fire, a viper, a poisonous viper, came out and fastened his hands. His, it fastened himself on Paul's hand. You ever had a viper fasten themselves on your life, trying to infect you with your poison, their poison? You're trying to do what God has called you to do, and they have just fastened onto your life, and they won't let go? They just right there in the way, and you're trying to do what God has told you to do, and there they are fastened. Hallelujah. But you know what we need to do? We need to do like what Paul did. Paul took his hand and shook it off. He just shook it off. Look at your neighbor and tell him, shake it off. Shake it off. Shake it off. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. He shook it off, and he shook that viper off into the fire. Sometimes, you know, when vipers come around you in your life, poisonous people, amen, venomous people, 
people who don't mean you any good once again to try to stop the vision, to try to stop the work. Shake them off! 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 Shake them off. off and keep going. Keep going. Keep going. Keep going. Keep going. My God, my God, my God, my God. Shake them off. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. The children did a play and they did shake, shake, shake the devil off. Hallelujah. That's what we got to do. We got to shake them off of our minds. We got to shake them out of our hearts. We got to shake them out of our conversation. We got to shake them out of sitting up on our tables talking. Hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. Shake off the very works of darkness. Amen? Amen. God gave them favor with the islanders and they looked you know they were talking about him by now you know he must be that fella must be horrible because now everybody else got here to safely and safety and then he got a viper on him he must be terrible because you know he gonna die soon because that viper that was on his hand is poisonous and they were looking have you ever had people behind you whispering about you and talking about you it's not a nice it's not nice is it hey, amen you want to turn around and answer back right you want to turn around and defend yourself, right? You want to turn around and get them told, right? You want to set them straight, don't you? Yeah. Hallelujah, hallelujah. But God gave Paul the wisdom, Amen. the maturity, the growth to just keep on going, to shake it off and just keep on going. And so when they were looking for him to die, when they were looking for him to stop, when they were looking for him to quit, when they were looking to bury him over, when they were looking to see, well, you know that's too bad about that fella. When they were looking for all of that, he's still going forth doing what God told him to do. Hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. Then God gave him favor, and because that happened, it turned, it turned the opinion of the islanders. Instead of them thinking he was a devil, they began to, they believed he was a god. We don't want to go that far. Amen. But they saw that instead of him being evil, that he was good. And he had favor with the islanders. And then he began to heal the sick on that island. And God began to prosper him. Oh, I said that word again. Prosper him right there on that island. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. And then as God began to prosper him on that Amen. island, they brought all of their sick, and he laid hands on them, and they were healed. Amen. Amen. Paul got ready to go on to Rome, and the islanders got all of the things that they needed, all of the supplies they needed, and sent them on their way. When Paul got there to Rome, he had so much favor with the Lord, the Romans said, well, you know, we didn't even hear the charges. Nobody has written to us and told us that you did anything wrong. You, you see what I'm saying? God can wipe the slate clean. He can wipe the slate clean, y'all. He can wipe the slate clean. There were no charges, but they still wanted to hear from Paul. But still, let's hear what you have to say. And when they heard Paul, they said, There's, you've done nothing to, to worthy of death. So what they did, they allowed Paul to, um, to begin to preach and to teach, and more people began to be saved. And God gave him a prosperous, successful ministry right there in Rome. Amen? Amen. Read it. The Acts ends with that testimony of how Paul, though his plan, it looks like God's plans were detoured, they were not denied. They were not denied. They were not denied. When God says it, I don't care what devil in hell comes up against you, they cannot deny. Once God opens a door, no man can shut it. Once God closes a door, no man can open it. When God says, you low, I've set before you an open door, all you got to do is walk through it. Amen. That's the end of the record in Acts about Paul's prosperity and his success there in Rome. So what looked like a curse became a blessing. When the Lord has plans for you, it's not like the world. Amen. See, when the world try to do their blue plans, they, get, they form a committee and everybody, what y'all think? You don't think this is a good idea? Oh, you don't, yeah, vote, yeah. You, you see what I'm saying? Yes, no, you know, all those kinds of things. That's how the world will do. And they will look with their little 
their limited view. See, they don't have the whole facts. They'll just look at what they can see, Amen. and they'll make their decisions Amen. based upon that. Mistakes can be made. Amen. Blessings can be limited. Yes. Instead of going this way, we're now going this way. Amen. Because the world doesn't see the way God sees. The world doesn't think the way God thinks. The world doesn't know the way God knows. He said in his word, beloved, above all things, I wish that thou might prosper and be in health, even as your soul prospers. Amen? He told the people, he said, if you are obedient, in other words, if you just do what I tell you to do, if you'll just listen to me, if you'll just believe me, if you'll just have confidence in me, if you'll just trust me, I will bless you. He said, I will bless you in the city. He said, he will bless you in the country. He said, he will bless your offspring. He said, he will bless your produce. He will bless you when you come in. He will bless you when you go out. He will cause your enemies that rise up against you to be defeated before you. Hallelujah. They come against you one way. They'll flee from you. How many ways? Seven ways. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. He will bless you in all that you put your hands to do. He will bless you as a holy people unto himself. He will grant you abundant prosperity. He will open to you his good treasure. The heavens will give you rain in its seasons. You shall lend and not what? Borrow. Amen. He's going to make you the head and not the tail. He's going to make you above and not below. Amen. The Lord will bless you. Yes. The Lord will prosper you. Amen. Your future is in God's hands. Amen. I know the thoughts that I think towards you, says the word. Eyes have not seen, ears have not heard, neither has it entered into the heart of man the good things he has prepared to those that love him, those that trust him, those that he can depend on, those that he can count on, those that he can send, those that he can use, those that will obey him. All we have to do is not give up. Not give in. Not give out. Don't get somewhere and sit down and just say, I'm, I quit. Stick with it. Stay with it. And know that your blessings sometimes are on the other side of through. They're on the other side of through. All you got to do is go through. Go through praising. Go through rejoicing. Go through praying. Go through alert. Go through knowing that God loves you. And then when you go through, you can say like David, yea, though I go through the valley of the shadow of death, thou art with me. Don't worry about who's behind you, because surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever, 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 forever. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. My blessings might be delayed. My blessings might be detoured, but my blessings are not denied. Hallelujah. God says it. He's going to do it. I belong to him. You belong to him. He loves us, and he wants to bless us. Amen. And amen. Amen. Won't you stand with me? Won't you stand with me? God has plans for you. God has plans for you. Don't you be one of those that's delaying it. Don't you be one of those that's denying, trying to detour it. But do what God has for you. Amen? Amen. I pray that you have enjoyed today's message. Delayed, detoured, but not denied. Remember, whatever you are praying for, hold on. Don't give up. No matter how long it takes, continue to trust and believe. If God says it, that settles it. It's going to happen. Be blessed, my friend.